this uh, I'm kind of switching topics here. I can't come up with a good segue, but um, there are a lot of people that are still interested in HTM hardware, yeah. about hardware architectures that could support HTM. And from what I understand, uh, at a at a basic level, I mean, uh, no matter how much we extend the theory, there's a certain uh, number of requirements that we could apply right now to hardware architecture that could support HTM uh, in the future. And what uh, can you talk about any movement that's going on in that space right now? I know there's a lot of people interested, but I don't know really what they're doing or yeah. where they're at. So there's a, there's a large community of people who are trying to build neuromorphic hardware. Right. And uh, the, these efforts have been going on for decades. Um, I mean, the problem is the plasticity. Uh, right? Well, listen, let's, what most people are interested in, why, what's motivating most people to build neuromorphic hardware and what's motivating most funding for it, is they're trying to come up with very low power computing systems. Ah, that's, okay. what the, that's the number one driver uh, because the brain is extremely low power for what it does. Right. And one of the reasons is, is because it works at a sort of a, a very small scale uh -huh. uh, and, it, and it kind of works in sort of the, anyway, it, the, it, people say, look, the brain does amazing stuff at 20 watts. Wow, we can't do anything at 20 watts. You know, we take a million times more to do the equivalent in a computer. Have a light bulb. Right? A dim light bulb. A dim one. Right? So the primary motivation, which is coming from the military and other government agencies, is to try to do low power computing. Right. Because remember that. Then they say, well, what can we do with that? Well, let's, we, we can't just build a regular computer low power. We've already done that. So let's try to build a brain like computer because we know brains can run at low power. Sure. So this is where that movement's coming from. Ah. Um, now they said, okay, well, let's start building neural networks in these, these neuromorphic hardware. And so the vast majority of neuromorphic hardware has been around the idea of, the, you know, the point neuron, yes. the simple neuron model that just says, you know, you got a bunch of inputs and the cell sums them up and it makes a spike. So plasticity is not, was not Not even plasticity wasn't even in there. And the neuron models are not biologically realistic at all. Right. Now those could be very useful for um, deep learning type of models because deep sure. learning models are and, built on... And they need computing power. They, they need, need, well, they, they, I don't know, I don't know if that's true or not, actually, I don't know. Uh, they can do a lot in software. Yeah. But, um, but you could use a point neuron model in neuromorphic hardware to do deep learning and there's some companies that are formed to do that. Right. There are other people who are really interested in building real intelligent machines and that's not as interesting to them. Um, and so it, what's been interesting, uh, I'll just give you one particular point. Um, uh, I, a, a couple of years ago, I met uh, Carl Heinz Meyer, who's in charge of the hardware of the neuromorphic computing part of the Human Brain Project in Europe. So that's the European-wide mm -hmm. effort to understand how the Big brain effort. works. Yeah. Yes, and he's in charge of the hardware component of that. And he had, uh, they have a, this HiCan chipset, which was really clever and really smart and designed. They have big systems now you can use, but it was built on the point neuron model. So two years ago, Carl Heinz and I were having, we both spoke at the co same conference back to back. And he came up to me afterwards and said, you're telling me I need to have you know, active dendrites. He says, other people have been saying that, but, but no one's told me why. And so I don't have them in my hardware. Mm -hmm. And he's like to me, he says, uh, I, th I think I'm quoting him. He said, you're the first person who's explaining why I need to have, you know, active dendrites. Right, and, and plasticity. I have, well, not, I don't even know what plasticity is. No. Active dendrites means the cell has more than just one. It has those dendrites. It has those, Thousands our dendrites. HTM neuron model. Yes, yes. You know, yes. Why do you have to have something like an HTM neuron model versus a point neuron model? Well, part of that model is that they... Part of the model is plasticity, but yeah. they, he wasn't even thinking of that yet. He was okay. just thinking like, my neurons don't have active dendrites, you're saying, people say real neurons do, no one's told me why I need them, you first, uh, you know, you're one of the first people that ever told me why a, a, a realistic neural model would need them. Right. So it's something HGM theory has provided. We have really probably the only legitimate model of neurons that requires, you know, apical and distal dendrites and thousands of synapses. Yeah. So um, we started working with Carl Hines and some of the people in his, in his research group. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a visitor here, Sebastian, you remember, who, who worked on porting HTM to the HiCan chipset. Yeah, which wrote a paper about he wrote a paper it. about it. We probably on our website it someplace. It was not easy. <laughs> it wasn't designed for this. It was like, you know, okay, we're going to try to, you know, make this thing work. Yeah, good luck. Oh, um, yeah, so we, so we, you know, Sebastian came here. We, we really tried to try to get how the HiCan chip can support HTM. It's really hard. It's, a, I mean, very clever engineering on, on both Sebastian and, and Subutai's part. Yeah. Um, and, but here's the good news about it. I just saw Carl Hines a couple weeks ago 
uh, at this Neural Information Computing Elements Conference nice. in San Jose, nice, yeah, the nice yeah. conference in San Jose, and nice. he told me that their next generation, they're including active dendrites, and, and um, a big deal, right? it is a big deal. Um, it's the first um, effort that I know that is doing that. That's great. Um, it is great. No. And that's that's a big pro that's part of the European uh, big brain. Yeah, he is the neuromorphic component of the human brain project. Right. So it's a big deal. Um, however, you know we, we can't get too excited because it takes a long time. These we're well, talking to develop chips. Yeah, to develop chips. So yeah, yeah. it might be seven years. Yeah. Before we see that in a large scale production system, well, we could do a lot in seven years. We could be uh, in seven years. We can hopefully have all this figured out. Right. So. Um, <laughs> so we'll arrive at the same. Well, destination I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem because you know um, they have to build something today, but we're changing the algorithms as we learn, and so you know. But it should. I mean. The basic requirements for HTM, the chips that are, are not going to change. Hopefully, some of them right? are going to change, but we're going to add new things. So you know, we may. Uh, it's almost, but it's just supporting the neuron model. Uh, yes, model. I, I would argue. History says suggests that we'll need at least one or two more rounds uh, of tweaking to get this right. Each right. one's getting yeah, better. You're probably right. Yeah, uh, each yeah. one's getting better. But we should be able to do something with it. We should be able. No, it'll be useful. Uh, right. Definitely. I'm just saying. Don't think. Oh, we'll be done. Right. Um, I'm certainly glad they're working. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's great, and we'll take advantage of them. We'll have models for them to use, and we'll be able to use their hardware. Right. Um, uh, but uh, so you know that world works at a pretty slow pace, and it's not that they're, they're slow; they work very hard. It's yeah, just that yeah, it's, 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 it's hard work, and it takes time, and these chips are expensive. And software is easy. And it's not they're just building a chip; they're building they have a, they have a room sized rack of parallel you know machines running on yeah. wafer scale integration. I mean, this is yeah. this is really serious stuff. So uh, it'll take a while before that all gets, um, uh, but it's happening, and I keep getting back every year to these these neuromorphic computing conferences. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Yeah, uh, every year I'm a, I'm an invited uh, main speaker uh, because we kind of represent a little bit of an outlier in that world. But everyone's kind of like, I, I have a sense of like, thinking, oh, damn, they're probably right. We probably have to do this stuff. You know? <laughs> oh, they, they don't really want to have to deal with it because it's you know it's it's, it's a different and, it, and a lot of the work that people are doing in neuromorphic computing is not really um, directly applicable to what we do. Right.